Forrest has asked me to do a video on handwriting effects, so thank you for that. This video is all about that. Before we start, my name is Rico Richardson. I upload weekly videos on DaVinci and Darktable. So if that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing. And this effect, there are a couple of videos on this on uh, YouTube already, but none of them do it the way I do. They usually get a text and then they use the masking effect and they paint it out or the mask paint, they paint it out and then that's their animation. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually use your own handwriting within DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. Right, and the first thing you need to have is a graphics tablet. So right now I'm using the Gaumon M10K Pro, which I've bought a while ago. And I've already made a video about this and I'll be sure to put a video in the description down below. So please check that one out. It also has an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click it, I will get a small commission. It won't cost you any more money, but it will definitely help my channel. It also comes with this pen, this stylus. This is a battery free pen which you need to use in order for you to go through the screen. So we're going to use this to create our own handwriting and then we're going to import it in DaVinci and create that awesome effect. Let's get behind the computer. And this is the end result. So I'm going to show you how to build this. The first thing you need to do is create a new file. And in this case, we want it to be 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to click OK. But before I do that, I want to go to the advanced options. And I want to make sure that fill with background color is going to be changed in transparency. And I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to use this bucket fill tool. But first, we need to change the color. And you can do so by clicking on one of those colors. And I've already got a green over here. But if you move this slider around, you can create one for yourself. And we need this green color in order for it to key out. So I'm going to press OK and I'm going to click inside. And now we've got our own green screen. And now we need to add some handwriting. So I'm going to change the color back to black again. There you go. And for the handwriting, you have a pencil tool or a paintbrush tool. And in this case, I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'm going to make sure that the hardness is set to 100. And now watch what happens. If I move this stylus over my tablet, you will see that it's moving over the screen as well. So the first thing is I'm going to create a D. I'm going to create an A and a V and an I with a dot and an N and a C and an I again with a dot. And there you go. So now we've created our own handwriting using this tablet. And now what we need to do is we need to export this and then import it into DaVinci. And in GIMP, you can just export it very easily by going to file and then use export as, and then make sure it's a PNG and we can just call this text or hand, let's call it handwriting. So handwriting PNG, and I'm going to hit export. And now the image is being exported. And if you don't know where to find GIMP, I'll be sure to put a link in the description down below. For those of you that don't know, GIMP is a free open source alternative to Photoshop. Now let's get this into DaVinci and let's start editing the handwriting effect. So I've already imported this into DaVinci. And now what we need to do is we need to make the regular clip a fusion clip. And we can do so by clicking the right mouse button on the clip and then go for new fusion clip and then we select the clip and we go to the fusion page and here we have a media in and we have a media out but what we don't have is the image that we need so i'm going to the media pool because that's where my image is and i'm going to drag and drop it onto the fusion table so here is where the magic starts because we don't really see it just yet. You can do so by clicking this little button and that will show it on the left side. And if you click the other one, it will be shown on the right side. And the same goes for the media in. So this is our source clip and this is what our final clip is going to be. And this all needs to be connected so that we've got an output. And we're going to do that first by creating a merge node. And you can do so by hitting shift and spacebar. And then this select tool menu will uh, appear and then we go to merge. We're going to add and you see that a merge node is being created. But we need to create something in between. So I'm going to drag this down because we need quite some space. 
after the media. So if I want to see where it is, let's see, it's almost in the middle. I thought I had it in the middle, but it doesn't quite look like it. So I'm going to transform it. You can select shift and spacebar, but you can also click this little symbol, which will create a transform node. Now, please keep in mind, if you select something, so like the media in, and then you select an effect like the transform, it will be placed automatically after that one. If for some reason that doesn't happen and it's somewhere up here, or let's say it's between here, you can change that by holding shift and then dragging it out and dragging it in where you want it to be. So before we're going to change everything, first what I want to do is I want to use the merge node and I want to drag it into the media out. And I want to change the transform from the yellow arrow to the green arrow. And I'm going to use the media in and I'm going to drag it to the merge node. And there you go. So if we select the transform right now to transform this, you will see that we can move this around. Now what we need to do is we need to key out the greens because it's still blocking our view. And for that, DaVinci has a great tool, which is the Delta keyer. So once again, shift spacebar, and we're going to find the Delta keyer. And then we're going to add it. And because we have the transform selected, it has automatically been placed between the transform and the merge node. And that's exactly what we want to do. Here's the fun part. We're going to use this color picker and we're going to drag it. So don't click it, but drag it and drag it over the green. And now we're going to do the fun part. We're going to animate this. And for that, we need a polygon because we're going to draw it ourselves. So I'm going to click that, but I don't want it to be attached to something. So I'm going to drag this down and this will stay the same as it is. And I'm going to select this. And now I'm just going to draw here and to make myself it a little bit easier i'm just going to make some shark tooth over here i'm going to place one here i'm going to place a point over here and i'll tell you in a minute why and then i'm going to close it down and now we've got a closed polygon structure and now we need to animate it so now that we've added a polygon let me just make this a little bit bigger we need to animate it so i'm going to make sure that this is selected and I want to animate it within 30 frames. So you can move this with your mouse button or you can move the arrow keys. And at frame 30, I want everything to appear. So now I'm going to create a keyframe. Then I'm going back three frames, one, two, three. So we're at frame 27. And that's when I'm going to make sure that the dots no longer appear within the mask. And if you want an extra note, you can hit control and then click on it and there you see that another point is being created so I can make this a little bit better. So now a keyframe has automatically been applied. So now we're going back three frames again, one, two, three. And I'm going to make sure that the eye is starting to disappear and that the final part of the C is no longer visible. So I'm going to move this in. I'll move this in as well because we've got a few too many points. There you go. And then we're going back three frames again, one, two, three. And you'll probably catch the drift because we're going to move this in and we're going to make the C and a little bit of the end disappearing. And you need to do this every three frames until you run out of frames. And that will make the animation come to life. Let me show you how. So I've added in all the keyframes. Now let me play this clip and see what happens. You see that this is starting to get animated but it hasn't been connected yet to our medias so i'm going to use this gray dot and i'm going to drag that to the blue point of the merge node and there you go if all goes well you will see this happening it's going to appear there you go look at that that looks absolutely amazing now let's go back to the edit tab and before I'm going to play it, I'm going to click this symbol so that we've got one window so we can't get confused. I'm going to hit the space bar and there you go. There is our text effect. Now, in order for you to sell this text effect, you need text effect sound clips. You can get them on Artlist, you can get them on Epidemic Sound, but DaVinci Resolve comes with its own free sound effect package as well. I'm going to make a different video on that because that's the sound you heard at the beginning of this video. This is how you create the handwriting effect within DaVinci Resolve. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comment section down below if this is something that you want to use or if you're going to implement into your videos. 
If you want to see more of me, please click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button over there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!